Shalom and welcome to Asia Torah here in the old city of Jerusalem at um, the practical spirituality course overlooking the Temple Mount. Um, the question on the board right now is uh, what's wrong with marrying Gentiles or cohabitating with Gentiles? And so that's what we're dealing with right now. And what we spoke about, uh, what we're speaking about now is the, is the actual covenant of circumcision which uh, I do have a class online on Torney Time just about circumcision itself, which is quite an in detailed on the subject, you know, of that particular uh, covenant. I, sorry, that particular commandment. Um, but, the, but the main thing for us is that the covenant with God, which is, which is the bris milah, the circumcision, is not, it's not just some, like, random sign between the Jewish people and, the, and God. It's not a random sign. It's because specifically that is the place with the most nerve endings on your entire body. Meaning, if you got a lot of nerve endings also in your eyes, and I made a brach on that rainbow. Who saw the rainbow? Rainbow. So I just saw that rainbow, and I was like, immediate bracha time out of gratitude of one of the more beautiful rainbows I've ever seen in my life. Now, I know observant Jews like to say, rainbows are bad, you know, but okay. But we got a, if we got a bracha to say on it, which are for gratitude, so it must be that things of beauty, which is one of the things you make brachas on, is anything beautiful like that, you make a bracha. When you see the ocean, you make a bracha. Okay, when you, when you, you know, there's blessings on th moments of grandeur. And one of those moments of grandeur is a rainbow. And it's not only that, it's a very positive bracha, that God remembers his covenant and he keeps it he keeps his word. It's a, like it's very interesting. It's all about integrity. The, every single line of the bracha is just that God has integrity when He promises something. So I guess integrity must be a thing of beauty too. Maybe if we keep our integrity, well, people start making a bracha on you. So um, you had a point you wanted to make. Yeah, did you ever make a bracha on like a really ugly creature? Yeah, you ever tried that? <laughs> a re no, it's a really ugly person. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's rough. Right, so I finally found my first really ugly person to make a bracha on. And I was like, can you hold still for a minute while I look this up? Because I couldn't remember what the bracha was. So, anyway, but I found the bracha. They held still. And I'm like, and I'm going down the brachas. I'm like, rainbow, ocean, particularly ugly person. Yep, that, that's you. Baruch, Atta. <laughs> Yeah, but it's not really an ugly person. It's not an ugly person. The blessings on a on a on a unique person, like someone who's super strange, and I've made the bracha many times. And I, I made one a year ago on a person. It was a midget, with full size legs. That was cool. That was amazing. You guys ever seen? You know what a midget is? Like full midget where there's like no real limbs to them, but big torso. So this had, big torso meaning that big. So this person had, their entire head to their waist was this big on full-size legs. It was the coolest thing ever. I mean, it, was, it was so amazing. And so I was just immediately made the bracha. By the way, the bracha is easy. You don't have to look it up and have people hold still. It's mishane habriot. Try that, mishane habriot. It means he makes different creatures, okay? So... <laughs> <laughs> he makes different creatures, and they, so Mishane in for Ashkenaz we say Mishane Abrius. You ever made the bracha? No, you, you can make it. Yeah, you can go and, I mean, you can go to a freak shop and make it too, yeah, specifically. Maybe then you make a shachiano if you haven't made it in a year. But the um, no shachiano. Okay, let me make a bracha. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Ha'olam Shahakol Nebevo. Where the nerve endings are, you got big nerve endings on your ears. That's why your ears are so sensitive to distinguished frequencies of sound. Your eyes, incredible distinction of sight. Your taste buds, like amazing distinction. You can tell if something's turned. It's like not going to be good for you. you. You can taste amazing, you know, distinctions and taste. But of all the places on the body where the most nerve endings are is, is the covenant of the circumcision. That's the spot. And... And that's our covenant with God. Why? Well, God lined your entire body with pleasure sensors. Because the whole point of the game is gratitude. Is to recognize your source in the pleasure of your life. Recognize the source of the pleasure. That's the ultimate thing. 
you know, if someone gives you a big juicy burger and fries that they, you know, barbecued up for you, you're going to say thank you for that, but a lot bigger thing is going to come after your first bite. Okay, someone brews an amazing beer, you thank him when he hands it to you, but you're really going to thank him once you taste it. There, there's distinctions in the creation. And the, when you distinguish those creations, especially with something pleasurable, so Thanksgiving is what you do. That's just the way it goes. And what is Thanksgiving's connection? That's the ultimate connection. When you give thanks, you're connecting. And that's why the word for toda in Hebrew is from the word Yehuda. You know, so if you look at God's name, okay, let's, let's just uh, do this carefully. Um, are you taking notes over there? Sorry to call you out. He's multitasking. Don't, please don't do that here. Yeah, you're either with me or you're not. Okay. So if you look at God's name, I'm putting a My little... My name's Yehuda. Your name's Yehuda? My Yehu is Yehuda now. So, <laughs> so cute. <laughs> Who didn't do that in school? <laughs> I know you're so Yud, and then a space for the next letter. I'm putting a blank because you can't erase God's name. And then there's the Hey, and then the Vav, and then the Hey. That's God's name, right? Now, if you have, and that's going to be really important for what we're talking about here. But now, when you want to go to Thanksgiving, so. Thanksgiving is going to be very connected to all this. The, the word is, uh, in, the word that we first kind of get it is from Ju uh, Judah's name, when Leah names Yehuda. And she calls him, um, she calls him Yehuda. So let's look at that. Yud, and He, and Vav. And then you, um, you borrow this part of the, the final He over here. I'm sorry, you, you use the Dom. No, that's going to be another thing. That was you, you. But the, um, anyway, but that's Yehuda. Do you see God's name there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Thanksgiving's got God's name in it. You ready for this part? This is the cool part. The cool part is the word is Tehuda. You know what Tehuda means? Tehuda is a crazy word. You know what it means? It means to to resonate with something or someone. When you're like, when you're vibrationally resonating with something, like, uh, I mean, just anything. Someone comes in the room who's super happy, they'll like bring you up. Someone who's like kind of down will like bring everyone down. You know, you'll, you'll be resonating. Like when I walk down the street, I resonate really strong. So like people just look up and smile when I walk by. You know that feeling when that happens? And don't you wish it happened all the time? No. <laughs> you know what you guys are all so beautiful today we got to just say hi to the hi to it. they always tell me to show everyone wave please just for a moment wave 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 hey. Hey. say shalom shalom, shalom. good packed house <laughs> sorry <laughs> come earlier next time so anyway the uh Anyway, but when you resonate with something, so you're in that form of, of Tuhuda, and all of these mean, they all ultimately mean God's name. They also mean thanksgiving. Thanks. Or I should really put the word gratitude. They all mean God. They all mean gratitude. And they all mean... They all mean, um, they all mean Jew. Because how do you say Jew in Hebrew? Yehudi. And so when you have gratitude, you're really putting it all together. Between Jew, gratitude, and God, these are all like, these are, it's one thing. And, and this is also amazing to understand for, have you guys ever noticed like Judaism kind of has a little TMI, like too much information? Have you noticed that? The amount of books that were that you know just just to study the Tanakh, but understand it, which means you're going to need the Mishnah and you're going to need the Gemara and you're going to need the Rishonim and you're going to need the Acharonim and you're going to need the modern day responsa based on modern technology and everything. It's just a massive amount of inf massive amount of info. But what is all that info? 
All that info is just splitting hairs of distinctions of things you thought were a subject, but once you click on it, you get to another website that distinguishes it. Well, distinctions in taste is when you're gonna thank the guy for the IPA, you know, the Indian Pale Ale craft beer, because it's only when you distinguish what kind of beer he really handed you. It's only when you distinguish something of beauty that you really get your gratitude going. You know, like any husband can send his wife uh, flowers on their anniversary or bring his wife flowers on his way home from work, going out for their anniversary. Any husband can do that. But it's when you bring your wife something that is like, so exemplifies your understanding of her, her facets, the distinctions of your spouse, that when you bring something home that, that so clearly recognizes who she is, that's gratitude. Gratitude, is, so the more it gets distinguished, the more connection that you get. This is also connection because we forgot resonance. <laughs> which is connection. So the, I forgot that word, we, that was the tuhuda. So the more the, the more you, your gratitude sensors are going, the more connected you feel. There are certain things that just can connect you to the point of addiction. Like for example, surfing. <laughs> I'm serious. Anyone here ever, uh, any surfers in the room? Yeah, oh, we got some surfers. But any people who like avidly surf, like, like you actually, we could paddle out together and tomorrow, for example. You, tomorrow morning. I'm going out tomorrow morning, yeah. Anyone wants to join me? I have a nine seater van and plenty of boards. You have a wetsuit and everything? It's cold. It's cold. Oh, you can borrow a suit. Where are you from? I'm from Connecticut, but I spent a lot of my summers out there. And plus, I was living here for the past year. Uh huh. You've been surfing the past year? Wow. I mean, it's going to be pretty big tomorrow. I was living in North Carolina this summer. Oh, great. Okay. So you can handle overhead waves. Excellent. So, <laughs> so we're going to WhatsApp each other a little later. Good. <laughs> anyway. And I, I hope you like beer. It's part of finishing surfing, yeah. right before breakfast. So, <laughs> anyway, but all of this, all of this creates, all of this creates connection. All of this creates connection. The more you're resonating with things, the more you're connecting to them. So now you understand why Torah has such distinction. And why we split those hairs, because you more, the more you split those hairs, uh, Rabbi, we're kind of out of seats right now, but I'll make the announcement for now. Um, this rabbi feeds a family with our Thursday class. So if it jingles, it buys drinks. If it folds, it buys fish and meat, okay? So everyone feel free. And, don't, and since we're dealing with uh, these kinds of things, don't forget my club, the Got Your Back Club, um, which is... Uh, it, it, we're, it's a whole club to keep the social media going for this, so please let me know if you'd like to be in the club so that we can optimize my social media, which is super not optimized right now, but I'm now in the process of, of getting some volunteers, but ultimately I'm going to be hiring people with the Got Your Back Club funds to get, because it's crazy. I mean, the, people are like, millions of people are watching Jordan Peterson, who's, you know, obviously a genius and fabulous, but, but he's got like some major holes in his theology. You know, and there's no reason I can't be out there doing the same thing and getting on shows with him and, you know, but we just got to get it out there, you know. I, probably one TED Talk would already put me in to being able to have a live debate with Jordan Peterson. Not that I'd have to debate him, I agree with everything he says, basically. Except for these gaping holes in his theology because he's a Gentile. You know, and no blame. I mean, what does he know, you know, besides surface reading of the Bible? Um, by the way, just I always love helping people make a living. So I've got two uh, two new businesses. Um, one I, I just throw them out there, and people sometimes grab them. Uh, one is a valley parking for the Miriam Shiva, okay, uh, <laughs> including. <laughs> is there something funny about valley parking for the Miriam Shiva? Anyway, that was one, and, uh, and which would include also a lot they could self park with a shuttle, and the. Uh, that's one, and the other one's called uh, Boober. Boober, B-U-B-E-R, okay? 
Buber, is um, if you notice around Jerusalem, you'll see uh, working mothers and learning fathers pushing strollers around, <laughs> trying to get their kids to daycare. And, and some of them just don't look happy. And so we're going to capitalize on that, and we're going to get a whole business of Bacharot, only females, Bacharot, who will push their stroller to the daycare and go pick it up later. But ultimately, we're going to have an app where you can just say, like, someone take my kid. You know, and then a Bahra shows up and takes her kid. What's that? Juber, what's Juber? So Juber is, I believe that that's what it is for all the people that don't have smartphones and can't have the Uber app on their phone. Oh, cool. So there's a number they could call and that central person dispatches Handles, dispatch the, the Uber. Juber, that's very cool. Yeah. I thought you were gonna say it was a jacket gamach. No, she says it's cool. <laughs> You got it. Juber. So, um, okay. <laughs> now, <laughs> when you resonate with somebody, when you resonate with somebody, that's the ultimate connection. I mean, those of you who are single in the room are like, you know, really wanting to marry somebody. Well, who are you going to marry? The person you resonate with the most. Like the person who you vibrationally jive with the most is who you're going to ultimately marry. You know, they, that's... That's how you know, you know, that, that you just jive with that person vibrationally. You're, you groove well together. And so you're going to marry that person. And that's the ultimate connection. And then we're back to the bris. Because God's creation is, a, it's basically built off pleasure. The whole entire creation is built off pleasure. And that's why all the brachas that a Jew makes is going to be on pleasures. You know, we're always making our brachas on the things that bring people pleasure. Except, and, for, except for what? Except for on the weird people. I don't know, it's a little bit pleasurable to see weird people. <laughs> what about dynamics? Yeah, that, and, no, we do have other brachas. I mean, we have the bracha, I mean, the ultimate bracha that someone says in their life is, is the bracha over a lost uh, loved one. If they, they lose one of their seven closest relatives. And so they make the blessing of, uh, called Dayan Ha'emes, which means the true judge. That's not a blessing over a pleasure. But it's... What? It's not a blessing over a pleasure, but it, is, um, but it is one of the more special brachas. I don't want to go into the details of it, but it is one of the more special brachas you ever make. Yeah. So... Is that where, there's, I can't remember where when I was reading about with a Jew marrying a Gentile, there's a statement in the Torah or in the Torah, somewhere where it says, it is as if he wasn't circumcised. That a, a Jew marrying a Gentile, <coughs> right, it's as if he fam- wasn't. It, right, as if he was there's a statement that says it's, it is as if he wasn't circumcised. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I never heard that. Before. I can't comment on that. Oh, I'll have to find it. I've never, I've never heard of that. Okay, um, here we go, gang. What we're going to do for the rest of the class is learn how to connect in brachas. Okay? We're going to learn how to connect when we, get, when we say a bracha. That is, saying bracha is the ultimate, ultimate connection. Most people think that brachas are what are in the way of the pleasure. Meaning, I really want to eat the sandwich, but I'm going to have to say a bracha first. Or, I really want to, I really got to go somewhere, but I've got to say the blessing after the meal. It's in the way. Many people, brachas are just, they're like little obstacle courses to get what you want. And also, you notice that, you can notice this a lot by the speed at which people say brachas. The quietness that people say brachas. I get excited when someone's going to say bracha, and then it's gone, and they never because they didn't they didn't say it. I didn't. They whispered it, and so I missed their bracha. The um, you'll also hear like when people say brachas, they'll say they think um, the word ata, which means you to God. They think the word ata means is spelled with a chaf. The word ata is spelled with a chaf. Baruch Atah. Yeah, Baruch Atah. That's what I said. And they also think the word Haolam begins with a Chaf as well. Haolam is, you know, Melech Haolam. Melech Haolam. 
And these are even non-Russians think Haolams. <laughs> they even think Haolams with a chaf. And, and I understand Russians say Haolam, but, but not Jews, did I say Jews? Not, not people saying brachas. So anyway, and then you, and then you always got these, uh, you got the rabbis making uh, brachas under chuppas. It's a big honor, but suddenly those, they have like this, uh, they have this huge, giant Kabbalistic understanding of the word melech, suddenly. Suddenly. Yeah, the bracha goes like this. And suddenly the word melechs become of great importance. So, we're going to approach brachas right now with, in a meditative state. And the way we do that, we're going to do it together. We're going to do each word. Um, we won't have time for the whole bracha, but at least we'll get through a few. So we're going to start with the word Baruch. And when you say the word Baruch, there's multi multiple meanings of the word Baruch. But the first thing you want to get, and most important when it comes to the word Baruch, is the word humble. Humble. Because think about it. You're now holding an apple. You want to eat the apple. But what's the source of the apple? What is the source of that apple? And the source of the apple is Hashem. I Meaning it might have come off your, out of a drawer in your kitchen, but then it came from the market, and from the market it came from the fields, and from the fields it came from Hashem. But that, that apple is a product of God. You're not the source of the apple, for sure. And by you making a bracha, before you even made the bracha, you're already recognizing the source of creation. So, now, look at, let's look at the word Jew for a second. What's the word Jew? Yehu. D, right? The word Jew is, I didn't put that in there, sorry. The word Jew is Yehu. Yehu. D. Okay, that's the word for Jew. But what it means is from the word to recognize. To recognize, sorry, to recognize source. The word Yehudi means to recognize the source of something. So like, for example, let's say I give Mayer this pen. Okay? What do you say? Thank you. Now say thank you. to do, Let's do it again. And yeah. this time I want you to turn around and thank George. Thank you, George. <laughs> A little weird. <laughs> so what do you do? What do you do when he said thank you to me? Recognize the source of the pen. I handed him the pen. That's the recognition of source. Whenever you're giving thanks, you're always recognizing the source of something you re you've received. And so too, in as a Jew, our whole existence is just recognizing the source of everything. That's what we're here to do, is just recognize the source of things. So now I'm going into a bracha. I've now got an apple in my hand, and I want to recognize the source. Anyone got a piece of fruit here? No fruit? Just a minute. Oh, here comes fruit. Mama's got a purse. There's this, Natana, there's a seat right there. Thank you so much. Can I eat it? <laughs> is it, um, is it, uh, really? Right. Where, can I just ask where you purchased it? Okay, the Jewish one. <laughs> Just checking. Okay, so now let's just think Kabbalistically here. Okay, I'm gonna draw a picture of this apple over here. Can you still see this over there? Yeah. So I'm gonna draw a picture of this apple right here. Um, and then maybe we'll use this stender for uh, give the apple a little place to be. <laughs> Hey guys, can you guys see that apple more or less? Less than more, but it's there. Okay? It's off the screen? Yeah, I think it's off the grid. Okay, you gotta start doing more production, I guess, at this point. So you can you can bend it a teeny bit like that, just gently. Okay, so what happens here is there's God. We got God at the top of the system. 
and God's an infinite being we know nothing about. And then underneath that, we have realms of worlds. This is a holographic realm here, where all the ten spheros, the ten spheros are like shooting through this realm. This is called Berea. And then the world of Berea shoots into a new realm, which is called Asiya. In the world of Asiya, so let's just say this beam is let there be vegetation upon the soil. That's the let, let there be vegetation from the, you know, the story of Genesis and gracious creation. So let there be vegeta vegetation, we'll call this one vegetation. But, but it is totally intertwined with the other ten. So there's no real apple. Apple's in there somehow, but so is a, so is a waterfall and, a, and a, the sun and the moon and everything's in there. But later what happens is that, that particular beam called let there be vegetation is going to come into this realm which is going to have all these, all these malachim that are coming down. Malachim means messengers. There's all these malachim that are coming down towards the apple. And what they do is they look towards Hashem's light and they just want to be totally engulfed in God. But they've got this bummer of a job because their job is apple. Okay? <laughs> Meaning they're going to be creating an apple. So like this is like, it's a bit of a downer. But it's, hey, 50% of the time it's an upper. Okay? So it's like, it's like God. And then you just, I guess you get like a little bit of a slap. And it's like apple. And so it just kind of goes to the one below it and just goes, apple. And the one below was just going, God. So it's like, apple. And so it just goes all the way down. Just God, apple. Apple, like that, all day long. And it's said that the, the, the Yechezkel, the, the prophet, Ezekiel the prophet, he said that the speed that this is moving is, he only had one thing he could use in English or in Hebrew, was lightning, Barak. He said it's like the speed of Barak, the speed of lightning, which is really interesting that it, he said it was the speed of light. Why? Because how is electricity moving right now? Like up this cable to, to keep my phone going. That's sick. That's moving at the speed of, it's a, I think it's different than the speed of light. But it's very fast. And what's happening is that, that every bit, think about it, every bit of that electrical cable is connecting to the source, but sending something down. It is not moving. They're not moving. They're stationary. Meaning every bit of cable is stationary where it is, and it is somehow connecting to the source of its power and then sending it down into the phone. And very interestingly, Yechezkel, the prophet, uses the word in that description of, he says the word, chashmal. Chashmal. What does chashmal mean? Electricity. Electricity in modern Hebrew. But what is it really? Chash means quiet. Mal means speak. So it's like, Apple, apple, apple. And so the entire electrical system is coming off these Kabbalistic understandings. Which is amazing that the, that the modern day Hebrew used the word Hashemal. Because it's exactly what's going on in there. And exactly what Rebbe, what Rebbe, Rebbe Yechezkel, what the Navi Yechezkel, the prophet Yechezkel used to describe what? The, the malachim, which we don't have an English translation for, of course they'll use the word angels, but these aren't like winged things, you know, healing Abraham's circumcision. But they're, they are, these are, these are messengers, so to speak, that are just hashmal. They're just, they're just, whoa, and then apple, and whoa, apple, oh, and then boom. Which you could say is shachris, and then going to work. You know, it's like, first daven, get yourself in a state of awe, and then go make some money, and then go back to shul after you work. So it's like awe and, and you know, connect to God, but now go do something with it. It's not like India, where it's all awe, and then, you know, and then there's more awe, and later they're going to be serving rice or something, you know. You know, we're going to be serving chun, okay? And that costs a lot more, okay? You, you got to deal with cows and stuff. So, anyway, what happens is the bottom malach, I'll put it up higher so you can see, the bottom malach in the end is the shape of this apple. So I'll just outline the apple here. Okay, whatever. The bottom is the apple. 
I'm not much of an artist. Pretty good on guitar. Okay, there's the apple. And the uh, and what happens at the right before the bottom? I'm gonna give him some wings. A bat. It's, it's like a bat. Okay. So at the bottom, the apple. There is a bottom line malach at the end. He's in a whole realm. By the way, this realm here is massive, because this is our realm down here. So there's another realm. There's lower than that. There's, there are malachim that go lower. If, for example, the world of mineral, the malach keeps moving down the system to get to mineral. I mean, if it was, if it was uh, let there be earth upon the waters, that's one of the let there be's of Genesis. So that let there be earth upon the water is gonna, here again, it's holographic, so everything's intertwined. But then when it starts to spread out, it's gonna go even lower than the apple through the system till it gets to whatever it's going to be, because it's going to be, it might be gold, it might be silver, it might be just granite. But it's got to make its way down here, because our entire creation... Now, what all of you should be getting right now is that this apple doesn't really exist. Because all of this, this apple's existence, as well as your existence and the existence of this room, so, is only because we're right now in the middle of some crazy light show. <laughs> and we're, we're, we're at the other end of some holographic projection. That, that's all around us and is really awesome. And it's being totally orchestrated around you. Think about it. The whole thing's being orchestrated around you all the time. But you don't even exist. And you're already mostly dead anyway. No offense. <laughs> <laughs> but you're really mostly dead. Have you ever thought about that? How you're mostly dead? Why? Because you have, you have the part of your soul that's like way up in this realm. It's, it's actually... It's up in the realm called, uh, what do we got? It's Silas Berea, it's here. So we have a realm of your soul that's, that's up. I didn't do other levels, but there's other levels. That's called the Yechida. Then you got a realm of your soul that's called the Chaya. Then you got a realm of your soul that's called the, 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 the Neshama. Then you got a level of your soul that's called the, the Ruach. And then, and then you got this whole level. By the way, there's levels here too under this line. Level, let's use my pinky. So it's like coming down, 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 down. It's called the nefesh. And then right at the very bottom of it, like about the level of that little white on my fingernail. I cut my nails on Friday, so there's some white there. And right about where the white is, plugs in, it actually has a USB cable interface to your neurons. That's why you actually are, can recognize you're sitting here right now. The only reason you recognize yourself as a point of reference to sit here right now is it because your neurons are telling you that. Your neurons are reporting the vibrations coming out of my mouth right now to that little thin membrane of nefesh. The actual conscious self is part of this system. But think about it, that little thin membrane of, from, your, from your yechida, your chaya, your neshama, your ruach, and then the very bottom of the nefesh is the only part of you that's the conscious part of you, which means you are mostly dead. You're mostly dead. The tiny little part of you that's still in this world is this little thin membrane, the bottom of the bottom of the nefesh. And here's the scary part. The scary part is that our whole fight over Hanukkah with the Greeks, with they didn't like that. They wanted you to think, and you're ready for this, and you're all going to realize how Greek you are when I finish this sentence. They wanted you to think that this was all of you. They wanted you to think that you begin and end with your body. I mean, it was just like Greek, you know. You know, like, like this is the beginning and end of you, is your body. And this is why Jews make such darn good decisions, Mr. Uh, Briss over there. It's why Jews make such... <laughs> <laughs> a new nickname. So this is, why, this is why Jews make such darn good decisions is because if you know that 99.9% that .9 of you is already upstairs, and the only part of you that's even like loosely linked to you is the very thin membrane of the bottom of the nefesh. And then, of course, your nefesh is getting every kind of like, you know, I want my MTV and I want my this and my smartphone's running out of battery and, and you know, I really need those shoes. I have five daughters. You know, I, I really need those shoes, and, 
And I'm curious how many pairs of shoes are in my house, actually, <laughs> between my wife and my daughters. But what happens is when the body sends you a message saying, you know, let's do this. So a Jew who's you know, at least somewhat Kabbalistically informed says to his or herself, well, as long as it can connect me further to God. I mean, if, if this is going to be a greater connection, then I would consider it. But if it's not connecting me more, so then why would I be doing it? Because it's not going to be part of anything other than just the enjoyment of the moment. Well, enjoyment of the moment might be very much connecting. For example, for example, um, my favorite flavor ice cream, which is coffee ice cream. I love coffee ice cream. I'm a sucker for coffee ice cream. So, but I'm going to make a bracha on that coffee ice cream and, and enjoy it and have it dance on my taste buds a little bit and connect it to God, like just connect it. And, and now you can't really use coffee ice cream as a great example, but how about a, how about a salmon steak? Uh, no, surfing. <laughs> surfing. Surfing's easier to connect, maybe. Well, salmon steak's really nice because you're going to use the strength to do your mitzvahs. Right, so it's easy. Yeah. Surf, surfing's, surfing? surfing's got another thing going on. It's got a, um, first of all, an incredible body, body in shape. Your body gets in great shape when you surf. You never see a fat surfer. Okay? okay. So Surfers are in great shape. How does that connect Being in great shape? Being in great shape is... Being in shape is one of the most important things to connect to Hashem. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it, nice lady. What's your name? Pearl. Pearl. If I were to suddenly step on your toe really hard, yeah? So now your body would be complaining greatly, okay? And you, you would... Your whole being would be somehow like really focus on your toe because your toe really hurts, right? Mm -hmm. And the same would be if anyone's ever had a bad headache. It's like your whole world collapses into this little spot on your head that hurts. And if someone has a bad backache, like their whole being collapsed onto that little muscle there on the back where they hurts. So we collapse onto our, wherever our lack of health is, it becomes a voice in our head that can be consuming. But when you're in great shape, your body goes quiet. Well, then the only thing left is the soul. When the body voice, when you're in perfect shape, your body voice goes quiet and your soul voice goes up. When the body's making noise, you don't really hear your soul because the, the body voice will consume you. And so you want to be in top shape. And, 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 but that's not even going into the gratitude of being out in nature. See, the ocean's a wilderness. You know, wilderness, when we hear the word wilderness in Hebrew, it means midbar, right? Midbar. Well, what's that word? Midabar. It means midabar. Well, it means wilderness. But what's a wilderness? Wilderness is where there's no people. And you're in a natural environment. So the ocean's one of the midbars. And the desert's a midbar. And the forest is a midbar. Anywhere where there's no people around and it's natural environment, that's called midbar. Well, what's the word in Hebrew? Midabar. And the word midaber means, means uh, to speak. Now, let's juxtapose it. If you're living inside a highly populated area, any town or city, so then what is your voice? It's hard to distinguish from all the other voices. We're highly influenced, and especially today, because today we have advertisement. You know, advertising's been around for probably many years, but, you know, today it's like, whoa, a full-on bombardment. It's hard to know what your voice is. Then you got your parents' voice, and you got the education system's voice, and you got the, you know, the, the community voice, and you got, it's hard to know what your voice is. But you get yourself out there, ain't no other voice but yours. And you may take, you may take some time to purify what your voice says, but I for sure, when I got something to figure out in my life, and I got decisions to make, besides being a total advice freak, I ask everybody advice. You know, I, I, if you guys left me to my device, I'd ask you advice, and I've asked the class sometimes advice. So, the, but I'm a big advice guy, but when it makes time, when I really need to work something out inside, I just go to the wilderness right away. And so, anyway, when you're surfing, you're in the wilderness. 
You want to hear something amazing that you guys are all in my class. I'm the only one, you're all coming to hear what I have to say. I'm the only one who was out of school since I was 11. Now, where did I spend all my time? Surfing. Yes, I was in the mid bar. And if I wasn't surfing, or if I'd already surfed, where was I? I was mountain biking. Where is mountain biking? Amongst people? No, it's way out there. Like, way out in the wilderness. So, this was going on for me from 11 years old till I was 23 and showed up in Jerusalem. 12 years straight, 6 to 8, 10 hours a day. And if it was a full moon, I was out surfing from 11 to 1 at night. I spent my whole life in the midbar. And so while everyone else had voices being placed in their head by God knows who, because I don't think one person in this room on your way to your first day in the school system, you know, while your mommy was walking you in, you know, I don't think any of you stopped at the doorway and said, uh, Mommy, before we go in, can I speak, please just meet the teacher? She's like, yeah, please. So the teacher comes out and says, oh, hello, little boy, or hello, little girl. And you said, and you said, I mean, today you couldn't tell much, but, and, and you said, um, I just want to know what it is you'll be teaching us and how do you know it's true? <laughs> uh -huh. I don't think any of you did that. And so it gets really hard to find your truth inside. Now, there's truth outside and there's truth inside. And you got to learn how to walk them both. Because I meet a lot of people who are way outside the realm of Torah. Like, way outside. These people are, like, over the edge from anything having to do with Judaism. But they're Jewish. And they tell me they're following their truth. So I'm like, well, you know. I guess when you're traveling from one place to another, that's a complicated drive. You don't use ways. You just follow your truth. So there's a great line by uh, Rabbi Nachman of Breslov, and I'm, I'm a terrible Breslover. I know so little Breslov, it's ridiculous. But, but I do know a few lines, and the only reason I know them is they're from songs. Yeah? So, <laughs> so one of those songs goes like this. It's just a folk song. It goes like this. <laughs> Let's choose the right key. I'm not warmed up. Tnu li et libchem v'ani adrichotchem bederech chadasha Shekva yeah, you guys like that? Let me. Oh, my part of my face cut off? Yeah. Okay, it's better than all my face. Okay. No, we were just having a talk at my house. I, I figured my last dinner conversation with the family was uh, we're all sitting at the dinner table. I said, What if you had to lose your legs? Would you rather die? And I was like, No, I'd rather live. Said, what about also your arms? They're like, Rather live. And what about your body? <laughs> Anyway, no matter what I said, everyone decided they'd rather live. I'm going to translate those words. Yeah. Tenuli et libchem means, um, can we pass around a cup for the, the, the rabbi's going to deliver that to feed a family for Shabbos? Um, one cup's good. So here we go. Tenuli et libchem, give me your heart. Van yadrichotchem b'der chadashah. I will lead you on a new path. A new path, that means follow your heart on a new path. Shekvar hachuba, that was already walked on. Avoteno, so it's like make up your mind. Is it new or it's walked on? Shekvar hachuba, that was already walked on by our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Ve'afal pikein, but nevertheless, hidera chadasha, it's a new path. Because you've never walked that path. Okay, everyone, have a great Shabbos, Shalom, third meal at my place, Shkia time. And uh, please be in touch with me if you'd like to be part of the Get Your Back Club. And uh, people are putting in anywhere between 10 bucks to 100 plus for a monthly recurring. 
to be part of a club to get this stuff out there already. So it's really out there in a big way. Shalom, everybody. Okay, those of you who would like to take a quick break. Sorry, Ali. You don't need to take a break.